Welcome to the Extreme Broadband Engineering product installation training. In this session, we'll install the Infinity Premise system modules. The learning objectives for this session are review the amplifier port layout, explain the benefits of the FIC port, install modem and splitter modules, and show the powering options. Let's get started. Let's go over the features of the IPA1001 amplifier. On the left is the signal input port. The right port has dual functions as a signal output port and is used for remote powering which we'll review later. The middle port is for direct powering of the amplifier. This is also referred to as local powering. On the lower left is a unique bonding block system. In the center is an LED power indicator, which is a visual indicator that the amplifier has 12 volts DC. Here we're showing the Infinity Premise 1 output amplifier. Using this, let's look at a traditional cable installation for a modem and four video outlets. The first device is a two-way splitter for the modem service. The input signal flows through the splitter and one output feeds the modem VOIP outlet. The other output feeds the amplifier's input port. The output port of the amplifier is connected to a four-way splitter which feeds the remaining outlets. The Infinity Premise modules utilize the Extreme FIC port, which stands for F Interface Connector. This allows a wide variety of modules to be connected directly to each other, thus eliminating jumpers, connectors, and craft issues. The Extreme FIC port was designed to meet rigid engineering standards and today's technology demands. Let's get rid of the jumpers and use Infinity Premise FIC modules. The use of the modules in this example eliminates two jumpers and two connections, reducing points of failure. Concerns over minimum cable bending radiuses are reduced. The input signal feeds the modem module. The modem port is identified with the blue label and port color, making configuration simple. The blue modem port feeds the modem VOIP service. The signal flows to the other output port of the modem module to the amplifier, which feeds the splitter module to feed the other outlets. Infinity Premise modules make the installation quick and easy. Let's take a look at an installation and the flexible powering options. In this example, we have a bedroom outlet with a TV and a set-top and an office with a modem VOIP service. The input signal feeds into the input of the modem module. The signal flows out of the modem port to the office outlet feeding the modem VOIP service. The other output of the modem module flows to the amplifier and the output of the amplifier feeds the splitter module which feeds the bedroom outlet to the TV and the set-top. The first powering option that we'll look at is local powering. With this option, we'll use the dedicated power port. This requires running a dedicated cable from any convenient AC outlet. In this example, we'll run it from an AC outlet in the bedroom. Connect the cable between the AC-DC 12 volt power pack to the dedicated power port of the amplifier. Plug the power pack into the AC outlet. The DC from the power pack flows to the amplifier and now the amplifier is activated. The signal flows from the amplifier to the splitter to the bedroom outlet. Let's now look at remote powering. With remote powering, we'll share the same cable as providing RF to the outlet. In order to do this, we must use a power inserter which combines DC and RF together and a power passing splitter. The power inserter has three ports. One port labeled 2 power supply. This port only passes DC and is connected to the power pack. A port labeled 2 amplifier DC slash RF. This port passes DC and RF and is connected to the cable that goes to the amplifier. And a port labeled 2 TV, modem, 
RF output, this port only passes RF and is connected to the end consumer device. The power passing splitter is identified with a red line and passes DC from the lower left port to the input port which feeds DC to the amplifier. Connect the DC power pack to the DC port of the power inserter. A cable is connected between the power passing port of the splitter to the DC RF port of the power inserter. The cable is connected between the power inserter's RF port and the TV in the set top. Plug the power pack into the AC outlet and DC flows to the power inserter through the cable through the power passing port of the splitter to the amplifier and the amplifier is activated. Signal flows through the amplifier, through the splitter, and from the RF DC port of the power inserter to the RF port which feeds the TV in the set top. The Infinity Premise modules reduce the number of F connectors and jumpers that are needed for typical premise installations. By reducing these numbers, it reduces the number of points of failures that could cause interruptions of service and improves quality of service. The FIC port design allows the modules to be connected directly together, providing flexibility in reducing craft issues. Less jumpers and connectors not only saves the cost of material, but the labor time needed to construct jumpers and configure them at the premise. The Infinity Premise Modular System makes configuration quick and easy and eliminates jumpers. A variety of splitter modules are available to meet any outlet configuration. The modem module allows for a passive feed for VOIP modem services when using an amplifier. The modem module can be rotated 180 degrees for a compact installation when using remote powering. There is a label on both sides of the module for easy port identification. The power inserter module provides flexible remote powering. Infinity Premise System, modular components designed to work together. Let's review what we've learned in this training on Infinity Premise System modules. We reviewed the amplifier port layout, explained the benefits of the FIC port, learn how to install modem and splitter modules, and show the different powering options. Thank you for viewing this product installation training on the Infinity Premise system modules. For additional training topics, see our website at www.extreme-broadband.com.